guys Alan Cass here what I'm gonna do in this video is uh, I'm gonna show you the process of mapping out the beat so we're gonna have the chorus we're gonna have a bridge the verses and also on top of that I'm gonna be mixing the beat so we can kind of go through my process and uh, hopefully can help you guys if you have any questions about mixing and mapping out a beat using Pro Tools so let's get right into it so this is the beat I'm working with right now I uh, pretty much use Reason uh, 10 to produce most of it, and then I threw in a couple sounds using the using the Expand, which is an instrument that comes uh, with Pro Tools. So I use that for for the sounds, and the rest of them I just made in Reason, exported them, brought them right into this. So let's get started. <laughs> Basically, I like to have every instrument in the beginning. So I got every sound right here, which is four bars. So the reason I do that is because I, I try to mix the beat before I map it out. That way I have every sound right here working together before I try to map out the full beat. So let's go ahead and get started. What I like to do is basically start out with the drums. Now I'm not the best at mixing by any means. This is just how I mix. So if this can help you out, that's dope. You know what I mean? If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. So let's get started. So first thing I like to do is solo the drums. So we're gonna start with the kick. So the thing with Reason is when you export sounds usually they come in a stereo so what I like to do is I like to take my drums and usually you want kicks to be kind of right in the middle you don't really want them to be panned to the left or to the right so I usually do that for my uh, kicks and my claps so here we have another kick it's kind of like a knock knock sound so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna make this one just a little bit pan to each side. Wanna do the same thing with the clap, put it right in there. Okay, now I have that. So usually the first thing I mix is I add a little bit of depth to the hi-hat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a reverb. Now I don't have any crazy plugins, um, you know, those thousand dollar plugins, pretty much none of those. Um, these all don't work. They just came with my Apollo Twin. So basically, I'm going to throw in the standard stuff. So we got a reverb. I'm going to throw in a little deverb on the, on the clap, on the hi-hat, I mean. So I like to bring this up. And you don't want too much hi-hat uh, being reverb. So I just turn it down a little bit. Make it so it's not too noticeable, but it gives it kind of like a, a wider sound. Okay, now we're going to throw in the open hat. See how that sounds. Usually if it's an open hat, I like to kind of keep it wide. Because it kind of gives it a, a different sound. So... I might throw in a little bit of reverb on that one too. So let's go ahead and do that. But I'll probably play with this so it's not exactly the same. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to EQ the clap a little bit. 
And then again, you know, you, anyone can do this in different, uh, there's no format you have to do this in. It's kind of like however you feel, however your process is. But I'm just going to play around with the clap, kind of see where it sounds best. And then I'm going to uh, throw that EQ in there. So. So I like to kind of like add a little bit of volume here in the EQ to my claps in this section. So kind of not really the highest frequency, but the high mid frequency. Because if you do it up here, that's kind of where I feel the hi-hat is best. So I try not to play with it too much there. So... Go ahead and EQ the kick a little bit. So we're gonna add the same EQ. And if you have Pro Tools, you should have all these same plugins. So sometimes I like to uh, use some of the presets in the EQ that comes with Pro Tools. So for the kick, booming kick, I like this one a lot. It kind of takes out some of the higher frequencies and brings in the real boom of the kick, you know what I mean? So here we go. The next thing I want to do is uh, basically do the next kick because I don't want both kicks kind of conflicting with each other. So we have kick one. I like to do one there. I'm okay with that. Next one, I'm not kick. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in a different one to that one. take out some of the high frequencies as well because honestly in, in most kicks you don't really need that that much so next sound i want to bring in um yeah we could just do the crash might as well do the crash um usually since the crash is kind of like emphasizing that part of the beat really hidden and coming in. I like to just keep both of these pan to the left and right. So it's kind of a wide sound. I'm throwing a little bit of reverb on the crash. So it doesn't sound like as generic, you know what I mean? All right. So next sound I want to bring in is the 808. Also, you're going to want to throw that in the middle if it is a stereo sound that you have. Because you kind of want most of your drums to be right in the middle. And then the other instruments can kind of go around that. That's just what I learned a little bit. But everyone has their own methods, you know what I mean? So let's go ahead and play with 808. So one thing I like to do with the 808, and I'm sure you guys have heard heard of this in the past, it's called side chaining. So I pretty much usually just do it for the kick and the 808, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. So under sends, you want to go to your kick, right? You want to send it to a certain bus. You can go ahead and choose any bus you want, any of these. It doesn't matter if it's 1 or 32. I usually just go with 5. Okay. You're going to want to bring this pre-fader up to zero. All right. And then you want to make sure this is selected, pre-fader. Okay. So that is basically, that doesn't change the volume of the kick at all. This is just the send, the bus. So, okay, next thing we want to do is we're going to go to the 808. On the 808, we're going to go to our plugins and we're going to select dynamics compressor this is the standard compressor that comes with pro tools okay so i'm going to basically show you guys how to side chain and why i do it usually it's the 808 that gets side chained so right here on the compressor you see side chain now what this is is like the key input right so you're turning it on side chaining next thing you want to do 
is you want to select your key input right here. And which one you guys think we're going to select? If we want to compress the 808 with the kick, we're going to go ahead and go straight to bus 5 because that's where we sent the kick, bus 5. So now, now that we selected all these settings right here, you can see that the 808 is being compressed every time the kick hits because right here, if you're looking at this compression right here, it's moving every time the kick hits. So here you could change the gain. You could kind of mess around with the compression of the 808. But the reason I do this is it kind of puts an 808 in its pocket. You know what I mean? It, uh, it emphasizes the kick, makes it stand out, and keeps the 808 kind of right behind it. So it gives it like a nice texture. You know what I mean? So here I'm going to turn up the 808 a little bit. And as far as like attack and release goes, at the end of the day, it's kind of what sounds right to you. So. together I'm thinking I hear something else in there and I kind of want to throw in a echo on the hi-hat so we're gonna go over here to delay so we're gonna go delay and then since we have the tempo of the beat there's the tempo 86 we can just go ahead and sync it so it's synced to exactly that tempo and then go ahead and play with it These are basically different steps in uh, delays, so we could play with it just. I kind of like to keep them really minimal. I don't like to make them uh, too noticeable, so I just put them in the background a little bit. Alright, next thing I want to throw in is, uh, let's go ahead and play around with uh, one of these sounds. So that's basically like a deep synth. So what, what I want to do with that is since we have an 808, we have a bass kick we're going to throw in there later. I don't want to emphasize the deep part of that synth. So what I'm going to do is right here on the low frequency, I'm going to go ahead and just drop that. So I so the bass doesn't really sound in there at all. So... sound we got is the hit. So on the hit, I also don't want to throw the bass in there too much. So what I'm going to do on the hit is I'm going to emphasize the high a little bit. And I'm going to take this out and also emphasize the kind of mid-high frequency. So... So 
so here's when we get into panning a little bit more. So with certain sounds, you kind of want to find their pocket. So for example, this hit and this deep synth, they kind of clash a little bit, you know what I mean? Because they're kind of both lower sounds, but I don't want them to stand out over the bass. So at this point, I'm going to start looking for maybe I'll pan it to the right a bit, maybe I'll pan it to the left. Let's go ahead and listen, see what we find. Already you can hear they're not clashing as much because one is panned to the left, one's pan to the right. They kind of both have their pockets a little bit. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit more. I don't want it too much panning going on. So. And then I like to hear them on both sides, kind of see which one sounds better. Let's go ahead and bring in this is kind of the main sound of the whole beat right here. So let's go ahead and bring that in right now. So sometimes I like to go through the beat and kind of solo certain things. You know what I mean? So right now I just kind of want to hear the piano. See how it sounds with the hit. listening to it I feel like these two sounds are still kind of conflicting the deep synth and the hit so I'm gonna go ahead and just So basically in this area, I had this turned up a little bit on the hit. So that's why they could be a little bit, you know, conflicting. So what I did was I went back to the hit, I turned that down a little bit, and now they kind of both got their own pocket. All right, we got two more sounds we got to put in there. Make sure they sit right and then we're ready to rock. So this kick right here I added, it's basically, it's just a deep kick that goes with the other kicks we got. Uh, at least it goes with this one.
last sound. Here we go. Last sound is basically like a little bell, so. Nah, I'm not feeling those. I'm gonna go ahead and work with the ECQ I put on earlier. We're gonna see what happens. I feel like this beat is pretty much ready to be mapped out now. Everything kind of uh, sits in the pocket where it should be. And now we're going to close this. We're going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to go ahead and map out the beat. So there we got every sound we just added effects to. So what I usually do is I take every single sound. You could do this by uh, holding the shift key and then clicking on each one while you're holding that shift key. You scroll down a little bit, press the shift key again. Now, what, uh, what you can either do is you could go edit, duplicate, or the easier way would be if you're on a Mac, use the Apple D. So you're gonna go ahead and press the Apple key, then the letter D. Or if you're on a Windows computer, Use the Windows key, then press D. So, so as you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that shit hella times. So there we go. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to start building. So I like to have my intro kind of have usually the main sound, so it kind of builds up. So I'm going to take these. Let's take these kicks out. Claps, all that, hi-hats. And let's just hear that. I kind of feel like maybe we should, uh, it should be intro and then go right into the chorus. So it goes, so it's pretty minimal right here, then it's busy right here. And then we do some breakdowns of the verses. So I think maybe a cool idea I like to do sometimes is uh, I take out every sound in the hit or the bass and then leave the last note. And then also, we probably don't need the deep synth either. <laughs> So let's start it like this. So we just got uh, a quick little intro straight into the chorus. So next thing I want to do is uh, probably take this sound out, the bell. Probably take the deep synth out. I like to play around with it. So what I might do is uh, this bass kick, kind of that deeper kick. I'm going to go ahead and take that out right there. And then let's see how that sounds. Probably take the open hat out too. You know what I'm thinking I want to do too? So right here, I'm going to take out that 808. I think what I'm gonna also do is copy and paste this hi-hat right here. And the open hat, I think I might bring that back. So there's so many different ways you could really map it out, you know? It's all, it's all on your preference, but 
I like to kind of start it out slow, not too many instruments, and then bang, it comes in, the hi-hats come in. So let's try this out. I just wanted to focus on that hit when it comes in. All right. So you know what? Let's go ahead and bring in what sound do I want to bring in right there? Take that one out. Then let's go ahead and you know what? Like I don't like to keep it too predictable. Predictable, you know what I mean? So. for the last four bars of the court of uh, the verse I'll probably take out that main instrument too just make it sound a little bit different you know? <laughs> let's maybe take out some of these other sounds in here so maybe see how that sounds You know what? Okay, got it. So I'm gonna do is take it out up until here. Yeah, right there. So that's the thing with importing sounds. Sometimes you can't really play around with it and you gotta cut them a little bit. You know what I mean? Because it's an actual exported audio instead of a sound you played in. I like that, but I'm gonna take this one out too. See, like for example, I can go in here. We got a hit. I can just take it right out. bring this one back in go ahead and go like that 
Take that out. Take that out. Okay, so that's kind of the build up going into the chorus. So let's go ahead and play that. And I'm gonna take the clap out of there too. There we go. Let's cut that out. I like to take this 808 out too. We don't really need it there. So let's go ahead and cut that out. So then we're right back into the chorus where we got every sound playing. So now what I want to do for the last, for the second verse, I mean, is change it up. So I definitely don't like my second verse to sound like the first one. So let's go ahead and listen to what we got. Maybe we'll change it, you know what I mean, do something different. back in here the bell So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the last four bars of the first verse and then go ahead and copy that. And we're going to throw in the same last four bars. Command D. We got two verses, guys. Okay. 
So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a bridge right here. So we got two verses. I think for this last part, I'm going to add a little bridge, maybe like eight bars, and that's going to go right back into the hook. So what we're going to do is going to go ahead and duplicate all this again. I'm going to do a one, two. So that's the hook. It's going to come back. Here, let's just do something to kind of build it up. You know what I mean? Probably take out the kicks. Just make it kind of like a vibe and then have it just come back hard as fuck right here into the hook. Then it ends. <laughs> sounds except for the main sound. That's the thing with Pro Tools, sometimes the sounds that you make in there kind of fall off or it's kind of trippy, but definitely worth it at the end. sample got cut off because it's a uh to this kick sometimes you gotta do it this way Take this one out. I'm just going to basically do All right. So what I got to do is go in here. Copy and paste that. I just did. 
did y'all is uh basically if you click up here you get this multifunctional tool right if you go to the top corner you could basically fade it out the sound the volume so I did that because the 808 was kind of um, being cut off since it's a sample that I brought in from Reason that I exported. I played this, but it's just, I didn't play it in Pro Tools, so it's a bounced out sample. So. <laughs> something behind that game. that might not work because uh now i changed the kick up here see it's all really trial and error you know what i mean so let's go right here let's go ahead and duplicate that one yeah i see what we're gonna do thing we're going to do is just add one sound to basically end it. So. I think the crash would be probably the best. So let's go ahead and throw the crash in there. And then you know what? I'm going to throw in one more hit. And then probably that's it. Alright guys, we are finally done. This beat is mapped out, it's mixed. So now we got the full beat ready. The only next step would be to get it mastered, bring all those volumes up, but these are the basics of uh, mixing a beat and, you know what I mean, mapping it out to however you feel is right. And like I said, everyone has their own methods. This is just kind of the one I use, and if it could help you, that's dope, you know what I mean? So uh, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and there will be a lot more videos coming soon. Much love, y'all.